I don't know who drew this, I'm sure it wasn't Brian Toss, because as it's drawn it doesn't make much sense. First of all, there's not enough of it to do any good, and there's no protection whatsoever. There's no protection for the road, and there's no protection for the lashing. Either side is going to get chafed, and either side can then part. So I don't know, the artist must have had a uh, brain cramp or something. Anyway, we'll do it a little differently. We'll get it out on Anchor Road and, uh, and our good tough belly leather, which we bought from American Science and Surplus, and uh, we'll cut a piece of chafing gear for that. We're going to make it quite a lot longer because that makes a lot more sense than just that little bit of stuff. Uh, this is going to... There will be some movement in the, in the uh, horse cleat, uh, undoubtedly. So you want to have more than just a, an inch or two of, uh, of protection. First thing to do is just figure out how much you need by wrapping it around the road uh, and then drawing off a couple of guidelines so we can cut it out. Uh, I had enough trying to cut it out just to the edge piece. So I took it over to the bandsaw to, uh, to finish it up. Not exactly the tool you would expect to use for cutting leather, but this is pretty tough stuff. And so, uh, rather than spend a lot of time trying to cut it with a razor knife, uh, I cut it on the bandsaw. And it worked pretty well. It's flat and it's stiff, so uh, it doesn't cause much of a problem. Once we got it cut out to shape, we can uh, set it up to wrap it up again and make sure we're the right size and then draw a couple of margin lines uh, where we can position the holes for the lacing. Uh, just leaving enough space either side for the hole and some, and some leather to, uh, uh, so it doesn't tear. Uh, we draw the couple of lines there, that's uh, simple to do. And then we get out our uh, punch that we just bought. And using the, drill, the uh, table saw again for solid surface, we can position the punch on the line and punch out our holes. Pretty simple. All goes very quickly. Notice I'm using a bigger hammer this time. It uh, makes it a little easier. Once we got them all punched, sometimes you have to go back and just do one again if you didn't go all the way through. We got a neat little chafe gear, piece of chafe gear with the holes already punched for the lacing. For lacing, I'm going to use tarred yacht marlin. Uh, that's very nice. And now it does unravel a little bit if you're trying to push it through these holes. So I'm going to use a piece of gorilla tape to hold the end together and provide some kind of a <coughs> pointed reinforcement for going through the uh, through the holes. And it's just a matter of uh, securing one end and lacing it up. Not much to it. This on pretty quickly, just a couple of overhand knots or a couple of uh, clove hitches or half hitches will take care of uh, holding it on. It's not going to go anywhere. As Toss said in his little note, be better if you stitched it on, but then you're stuck with that chafe gear in that same place all the time. And this way you can move it around and uh, put it where it does the most good. Tighten it all up. Fasten the other end. Cut off the loose bits.
And you got your chafing unit. This is done with a smooth side out rather than a rough side. And as you can see, it can move around a little bit so you can adjust it in the cleat, in the hose cleat. And you're ready to go. You put a couple of lashings on the, in the worm of the, uh, worm it into the rope if you want, just to keep it in place. But I don't think it's necessary. It's got to be pretty well contained by the uh, horse clean. So much for that.